What you see here on the desk is pretty much my travel setup. Whenever I am on the road, I have a laptop of some sort, has been a MacBook for the past decade or so, a stand, this is the Roost stand, there also is the Next stand, and a Apple keyboard and trackpad for ergonomics. This is nice because I can level look into the screen. However, now I actually have something new and I've always been eyeing something like this, and that is a portable monitor which you can hook up to your laptop when you are on the go. It slides into your backpack and is just powerable with your laptop. And in this case, this here is the U-Perfect monitor, which is called the Model O. It is a 4K OLED monitor. And I'm really excited to look into this, unbox it, show you the features, and of course, show you how things go with this monitor on my travels as I am testing this out for myself. Now, full disclosure, Uperfect sent this out for me to review here on my channel. They're not going to see these videos before they go live. They have no input on this video. However, I do get to keep the monitor once I'm done with the review process. You will also, of course, find links in the description down below if you want to check this monitor out either on Amazon or on their own website. Now, however, let's jump into the unboxing of this monitor as I have not seen this in person yet. And of course, show you what you get in the box and how this monitor looks as well as performs with a M1 MacBook Pro. Now, one thing before I jump into the box, the shipping of this was actually extremely fast. It was ordered yesterday and arrived today. Now I am in Germany and we have an Amazon center right around the corner. So that may be part of that, but that is extremely helpful when you have that quick of a turnaround. Now, however, let's break open the box and see what is inside. Now, first up we have a small paper box and I'm going to look into this and see what's inside there. And then we have the portable monitor. Now something I already like about this is that it is this clean white packaging, really nice, almost reminiscent of a MacBook Pro packaging or something like that. Now I'm going to open up the plastic wrap. That may be something that they can potentially leave out in the future to reduce plastic waste. Well, let's see, and there we go. And now we can just simply slide this open. There's like literally almost no information on the outside of this monitor. And I'm really excited to have a look in here. There we go. Top is off. There we have a manual. Maybe we need that. Maybe we don't. And we are greeted with the monitor unit itself. Now I'm going to leave this in the wrap for now and just place it right here. And the other things that we have in here are probably some kind of cables and stuff like that. Let's see what we find here. So here we have a power brick. So that is really nice and helpful. This is a USB-C power brick. The output is 45 watts in maximum. And then we have a couple of cables probably. Whoa. Lots of cables. So we have a mini HDMI cable to full-size HDMI cable. We have a USB-C to USB-C cable. Then we also have a second USB-C to USB-C cable and a USB-C to USB-A cable in this box. And that's pretty much it. So that was in this one box. However, we also have this second box. And now if I look into what we already have on the table, this is probably the kind of like the wrap for the monitor as a storage as well as the way to prop this up so that you can actually stand this up by itself. And with that, I think I am correct. So we can take this off and there we go. So we have some kind of a silicone and then on the back here, we have the mechanism, which will then be the way to prop this up so that it actually stands by itself. And when you're not using it, you can close this off and you have it protected in the front so that nothing is happening to the monitor panel itself. And with that, we have everything on the desk that is inside of this package. And of course, we will have to now look at the monitor itself. Now, I am actually surprised at the weight. It is fairly heavy, I would say, but it's not overly heavy so that you would not be able to travel with this or something like that. It is like a little bit of a MacBook Air, maybe. That would be my comparison in terms of the weight of this unit. And overall, it just looks really slick. There's really nothing going on. There's no bumps or anything. It's a really nice design. 
The back is just extremely clean. Then the front, you have the monitor unit, and I think it's a 15.6 inch 4K OLED monitor. You have a bit of a black bar here at the bottom, which is not part of the monitor. Here on this side, we have two USB-C ports as well as a mini HDMI port and we have the rocker buttons up there. And I'm actually surprised as to how thin this monitor really is. And it just feels really nicely made with the aluminum on the back here and just a huge panel in the front. And what I personally really like about this is there's no branding whatsoever on the front. Oftentimes when I see monitors like this on Amazon flying around, you have a big branding right here in the center on the monitor and I don't like those things because I wanna work. I don't wanna see the branding all the time. Now I think it's a good thing to just put this into the package here so that it is protected. Oh, and there is a power button as well. And something that looks like it could be a microphone as well. And there are, I think, speakers on the left and right. And I will try out those speakers as well and see how they function. But it may be in a, another video because this also may just be the first impressions, if you will. But I'm going to just now put this in here. Let's see if it goes all around and nicely wraps the monitor. And there we go. And so now this is nice and yeah, in this casing. And it actually is kind of like, it's, it's reminding me of a huge iPad. And I think there are those kind of like bigger iPads, but this is really nice. It's a small lightweight laptop that you can slide. Whoops. It's a small lightweight laptop that you can slide into your packaging, but then you end up with this huge monitor when you actually just open this up, flip this around. And I think there's a way to just make this stand up. So now this way you literally have a monitor that is just standing right next to your laptop and it's standing there by itself in a nice angle so that you can actually just use this. And for me, one of the main interesting things here will be to find out how this actually works in terms of like being on the road. And as I've mentioned, I like to use these stands here for my laptop so that that is nice and high. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is going to be the replacement for the laptop monitor because of course it's an external monitor. You will have to find a way to prop it up by itself and the MacBook Pro monitor that I have with the M1 MacBook Pro, um, that has an incredibly good monitor with Retina and all of those things with the mini LED. This, however, is an OLED monitor based on the specs on the website. And so I'm really curious to see how this monitor will perform in comparison to the top of the line MacBook Pro monitor built into there, which is also one of the best monitors out there on the market for any kind of laptop at all. Now, however, I am going to do one more thing and that is to actually connect my computer to this and see how that first up responds and also see if the touch on this monitor, because it also has a touch panel, is going to be responsive and work with the MacBook Pro just out of the box. So now we get a laptop, prop it up right next to the monitor and maybe just open this up. So now we have all this set up and I think one of the best tests would probably be to potentially use a USB-C to USB-C cable. So I'm going to just see if that works. And one thing that I also remember from the specs about this monitor, and I will go more in depth about these kind of things in my review and when I have more in information and more testing done with this, there's a battery built into this monitor, which means that not all of the power needs to be provided by the actual laptop, which I heard is a big problem for some of these monitors because you either need two USB-C connections to actually power the monitor and also be able to display something to it but then you're draining your MacBook or laptop battery really, really quickly. So being able to separate those things out and actually have a battery built into the monitor makes this a more valuable experience because you don't actually have to use the internal battery for running the external monitor. But of course, you can also use the power brick that is included with the monitor to power the monitor and then just use the laptop for the connectivity and using it as that. Now we are going to plug this in into one of the USB-C ports. Let's see if something happens here and what would happen if I just hold down the power button or something like that. So there's an LED, something turned on. There's a keyboard setup assistant that is coming on on my computer. Your Wing Cool Ink device cannot be identified. So 
something's going on, but I don't know yet what exactly it is. And this may be the touch sensitivity things. Let's go into the display settings. Up to this point, the monitor is not recognized as a monitor. So maybe we just try and connect a second connection. And this may also be that the touch and the monitor capabilities actually are separated out into two different connectivities. So let's see what happens if I use the other USB-C port here. And there we go, something happened. It's apparently charging from the monitor to the computer. Let's see what's happening if I turn this on here, if something happens there. So now the monitor seems to be turned off again. And we are turning it on with the power button at the top. It has some kind of a connection, but apparently still more around for the touch sensitivity. And now I need to go around for one of the USB-C connections because the other USB-C cable is relatively short. So let's see what happens if I connect both of those to the MacBook. Now we have two USB-C to USB-C cords connected here. Let's see if something happens and the display seems to be not recognized at this point. But of course, the good thing is that the MacBook actually has a HDMI port. And remember, this is me really trying this out for the very first time. I've never used this monitor at all. And the new MacBooks, of course, have a HDMI port. So let's see what happens if I now connect the HDMI port to this, comp uh, to this monitor. And that would be something that is probably not the most ideal situation to have to connect like all of the things. But again, I am going to try these things out, see how it works and hook things up in all kinds of different configurations. There we go. Apparently we are getting a extra monitor that is recognized by the MacBook. So I can see this here on the screen. And there we go. We have the monitor up and running and it looks really, really good. I have to say that. It's a glossy monitor, so it is going to have some reflections and I can see that pretty clearly here. But now if I move something over, it's tack sharp. That is really, really good looking. And let's see what kind of a um, resolution we currently have on that. There we have the M monitor. This is currently set to default and this is a resolution of full HD, but it seems to be more of a 4K full HD. It looks really, really sharp, I have to say that. But let's check a couple more details because I have a program running which is called Better Dummy, which is actually really helpful for screen recordings in high DPI mode. So 4K, but scaling everything to full HD. So that's really cool. And I will make a video about that in the future. But there I can see that this monitor is currently running in full HD at 60 Hertz and it is running in high DPI, which means it is actually using the 4K resolution by default and it is displaying that all here on the screen. And I can even go one step further and I can go into the more space, which is a 2084 by 1152 in terms of the resolution. And still we are going to be in a high DPI mode. So let's see again in better dummy. We have the resolution set to right now. It is at 2084 by 1152, 60 Hertz. And again, this is a high DPI mode. So that is really, really promising. I have to say, it looks like the colors on this monitor are more saturated, I would say, than the internal monitor. And I'm not necessarily 100% sure why that is. Now with the internal monitor, I have True Tone turned off and those kind of things. And it is currently set to the Apple XDR Display P3 um, color profile. And with those color profile things, I also read that in terms of the technical specifications of this monitor, it is a fully 100% compatible P3 monitor. And that is on based on the specs that I read on the website. And with that comes a really, really good color accuracy that they are promising. Again, I will make all kinds of comparisons, but I have to say, just looking at these side by side, it looks extremely promising. As I've mentioned already, this is a bit of a glossy monitor. So that is definitely something in terms of the reflections, they are more clearly visible on this monitor versus even the inbuilt MacBook monitor. So that is something to keep in mind. But let's see what happens if I, oh, nice. Like that is something that I've never thought to be able to do on a MacBook. But 
Here you can see I can even touch this and basically make some inputs and it is really responsive. I'm really looking forward to just getting to know all of these things and trying out how it feels to actually be able to at least do some things with a touch sensitive surface here. And again, as I've said, I will go into depth about this monitor again in a secondary video when I have more experience with it. This is my first impressions of this and I have to say, I'm very positive with this so far. It works like a charm. Right now I have connected with three cables. Maybe this is one more thing that I can test. I can just disable one of the cables and now you can see the connection still there. And even if I now turn off all of the USB cables, I have taken out all of them. So this is now just connected with HDMI and you can see that it actually is also working. So that's also really, really interesting. And it looks like my MacBook was actually being charged from the internal battery of the monitor into the MacBook. So that was quite impressive. And if you have any questions around this monitor, the UPerfect O, the OLED 4K monitor from UPerfect, please leave those in the comment section down below so that I can cover that in the upcoming videos as I am testing this out, as I'm traveling with it and sharing more of my experience with this monitor.